Welcome back to Let's Talk Business. I'm your host, James Price. And we're up to episode 20. And we've got a couple of uh, interesting dudes to, to meet today. Clients of mine, but also uh, two owners of Ray White, Low and North Shore, Richard Harding and Jeff Smith. They've owned the business for many years. They've built a, a large and successful real estate business in the lower north shore of Sydney. And we're delighted to uh, have the opportunity to, to have a chinwag with them today in their boardroom uh, in their office in Mossman. Jeff and Richard, thank you for having us. Thank you for Happy having us. Yeah, hey, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it was, it's hard to get the two of you together at once. <laughs> it is a bit tough. Hey, I, had to, I had to put out a few incentives. <laughs> hey. Hollywood turned up. Hey, Hollywood turned up, yes. <laughs> Oh, we're really oh, yeah. And dressed up. Yeah, and yeah. dressed up. Yeah. I've got a suit especially for you, Jason. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Gentlemen, yeah. um, no, it's great, great to catch up. Um, look, I guess at, at the outset, at the top, can you give us a feel for the business? Just size and shape. What is it? What does it do? You know, just just, just for our audience, I guess. I just like to, yeah, yeah. Who's going to go first? Well, you can look at me, but Richard's better off to do this part. So. Is he? Uh, is he? Yeah. He's it's an, probably, he's an yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I, I think, I think, Going back, we started probably 25 years ago mm. or thereabouts in the business, but we've now built a business which is about 100 people in a real estate business. Yeah. Um, we've got four offices on the Lower North Shore and we've got about 10 businesses running from sales, property management, Mortgage broking, retail commercial, and uh, projects business, and then they're divided into other areas. So um, it's quite a diverse one-stop shop now that yeah. we've built, and most of that growth started in 2010, and then we really accelerated in the last five to seven years. Right. As we as we grew up. Yeah. yeah. Nice. 25 years. Did yeah. you start it together? Yeah, so we started in about 1998. Right. So we'd known each other for a long time before that, but, okay. um, but that's when we started business together. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you go into business together? I think we were, I think we were pretty good mates mm. to start with. Right. And we both had extremely similar values and ambition, but we never thought ambitiously that we would grow to this. Mm. It was... It was something that happened and um, we got on the journey and we were sales guys. Yes. Yeah. That's what we were and we've got a lot of good people around us who advise us and point us in the right direction as you've done yeah. in the past, James. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's good for us to, as sales guys to have that outside support and consultancy as well. Yeah. So, but, but as sales guys and real estate is all about the market. Right. Um, um, did you know the market? Did you grow up in this market or did you no. come into it? No, well, so I, I'm originally from the country, so um, from Wellington out between Dubbo and Orange, but yeah. I, I went to school down here. Right. Um, but all my mates and everyone lived in the lower North Shore, so since then was, I've sort of, sort of been brought up in that area. Yeah. Um, so, um, and really it was just, and then we ended up, you know, working here in a job and then, you know, it sort of progressed since then. Since then. And, yeah. and is this the city slicker or are you from no, the country as well? No, I'm um, country coastal, Coffs Harbour. Coffs but Harbour. I, again, I went to school in Sydney. Yeah. Um, so went back to Coffs Harbour and then ended up back in Sydney, probably 23, 24 mm -hmm. years of age. And we were mates from then on and. I'll tell you, did you, meet, did, you, did you meet a school in Sydney? Or not, not really. Not really? But not we, but not we really. But, but as it turns out, like, so we were a year apart at school, but quite a few of my mates ended up, because you yeah, ended up being mates of Richard's as well. Yeah. So, um, so, so we were, through that, yeah. I was at King's, Jeff was at Shaw, so we had very similar. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Opportunity yeah. to do that. But, yeah. but I think the other thing is, James, that, you know, at the beginning, like, I, I think how we ended up together is that we were good mates, but we trusted each other and we sort of worked on early early on that we were on the same journey. Yeah. Uh, and hence, yeah, we're still we're still working together now is because, you know, I think our goals and everything were aligned at the beginning. So what, what do you, 
what do you admire about Richard? If there was a couple of things. Well, who said it? Is there a couple of things? Oh, hang on, hang on. I'll have to have a think about that. married man. If there are a couple of things above the table, if you were talking about what would you want? Hands above the table. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look, yeah. I make a call on a lot of people on face value, right? And yeah. and, and you know, most of the decisions that we've made over our t- over the years that we've worked together, you know, some of them haven't worked out. Yeah. Um, but I but again, I think we we worked. You know, we learned early on, and I learned early on this that you now if I went into business, with someone I wanted to be with someone who was one aligned, two worked hard, but three I could trust. Yes. But yeah. also, I wanted to be mates with them. Yeah, yeah. Right, and we've been the best mates for a long period of time. And you have to be because in our game, like most other industries, you do go through your ups and downs. Yeah, yeah. You go through your tougher periods, whether that's personal, whether or not that's from a business point of view. You know, when you're working together six days a week, you're spending more time. You know, we spend more time with each other than, than we have predominantly over a long period of time with our families because we've yeah. been at work over yeah, that yeah. amount of time. So. Uh, but I think the other thing is that the, the, we've also wanted from the beginning, we've also wanted to enjoy it, right? And I think both of us have, you know, certainly from my point of view, we've loved doing what we're doing. I think at different yeah. times we've enjoyed it too much. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Oh, really? In the early uh, days. Oh, the early definitely. days. Did you? The early yeah. days before we grew up, we definitely enjoyed it. Six or lot. seven years. So, so you, knew, you knew how to celebrate success in the <laughs> early days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were. <laughs> <laughs> we had that down pat. <laughs> 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 but but it was I think especially my wife tolerated a lot in the early days yeah. Um, yeah. from especially him yeah. from uh, yeah. dragging me out and doing what we're doing. But, uh, but, a, it, but he was a bad guy. But uh, but again, I think as Jeff said, it's the test the test of time of twenty five years yeah. to still be yeah. best mates. Mm. We still know exactly what each other's thinking. We still help each other out on whatever issues wherever we're going. And I think that in itself, in a partnership, That's there's amazing. not mm. there's not many partnerships that can do that. No. Um, and I think that boils down to what Jeff said: trust. Yeah, trust. If, if yeah. we if we didn't trust each other, and it was like, and 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 again, five or six years ago, I sort of have stepped into more of a role of running the business. Jeff still loves the sales mm. side and the the catch and kill of the deal. Um, <laughs> Whereas, whereas when you're growing a business to this size, we were we were very dysfunctional at different times, and our governances across trying to get our processes and our structures right were very salesman-ish, yeah, yeah. and very yeah. shallow. Whereas we've been able to build the businesses through that, having two of us going at different directions so how did that happen right because I, I wanted to explore that a little bit like it's you know i see a lot of different businesses with with, with partnerships and, and, and joint owners and <clears throat> some are very successful and others you know are mediocre and some break up because mm. it just doesn't work um to get to the point where you sort of move, move more into running overall business and then you focused Principally on on that profession of sales, yep. I guess. Did that just click overnight? Did no. were there were there sort of rub points, or did it kind of just develop over time? How how did it, or did you did you guys just sit around the sport table one day and say, "Listen, I think I think know, we had to work towards our strengths." Oh, and yeah, and, and it came with its challenges because we're both used to selling and we're both used to running a business, yeah. and. Those, some of those things, just the way that we are, it's, it's hard to let go. Yes. Right? And yeah. you know, I know we're both in the, that sort of transitional period. You know, there's definitely times where you sort of think, oh, I missed that part of it. You know, and I know from Richard's point of view, he's also saying, oh, yeah, well, he misses the part of the deal. Yeah. So it's not yeah. something that happened overnight. You know, we, no. talked, we talked about it for a period of time, right? Because we also had to make sure that the timing was right. Yeah. But yeah, you've still got to work through it because to suddenly stop doing one, well, not stop, but suddenly say, okay, well, we need to head down a path. But I think the thing that made it a lot easier is that we both got to a point where we were we were working really long hours and we probably weren't productive because we're doubling up on a lot of things. Yeah. And, 
yeah. people would come and ask me a question and if they didn't get the answer they wanted, then they go to Richard to try and get the answer and vice versa. Um, and so we were doing both, but probably as we got busier and busier, we probably weren't doing both as well as what we could have. Yeah, I understand. And it just happened to be as well that it worked out that at that point in time, you know, I was still keen to do that side. Richard was you know, keen to head down the path of running at it. And you know, the thing I didn't realise is that you don't just pick that up overnight. No. Right? We've gone from salespeople to running a business. You know, so, uh, and the amount of training and re-education into going to running a business, I, I'd have to say that you're sort of surprised how much that takes, but there's an enormous amount of work that, that, that goes into that. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why was Richard the guy to run it overall? What did you have that allowed... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's... Yes, there was a lot of re-education, but between the two of us, yeah. I still feel... Jeff knows exactly what's happening in the business all the time and is part mm. of the running, just not the day-to-day running. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll talk a lot. Mm. And similarly, I still list and, yeah. and, and Jeff will run the, 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 the properties, but I know what's happening. So from a deal support, if there's an offer on the table and we're dealing in the higher end of Mossman, yeah. Lower North Shore real estate, the two of us will talk about that deal and deal support each other. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And similarly on the business, when I've got issues and different things, we'll talk quickly and we'll get each other's opinion and go, yep, that's the best solution, let's go forward. Because mm. we both understand it. So when we sort of go, we're on, we're not on different tangents, nah. we're actually you're on the to, same tangent, the but, we're, but we've actually worked out, and it probably took us 10 years mm. to work it out, that We've got, to, we've got to be doing different capabilities. And yeah, yeah I, I have really enjoyed re-educating myself. We, neither of us were that clever to get to university. Yeah. So we were yeah. sales guys. Yeah. Um, but we were street smart enough to know with smart people behind us, with people who can give us direction on different yeah. things. Yeah. Um, we, we were able to create a business. And I think, as I said earlier, Having that many people, we feel really responsible. So we mm. work damn hard yeah. for not only the people that work here, but their families and making sure that it all stays on the rails all the time. Well, you think, think about 100 people, it's, you're probably impacting, you know, five times that at least, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so that becomes a big responsibility yeah. from our point. Not that the team sees that all the time. They no, just no. see, oh, well... They've, they've done well or whatever. It's not. It's we we. That's why our values are so aligned yeah. that we feel that responsibility and we feel responsible to our team. And and they're great. All the people like we mm. we we were really probably more built the people side of the business to what we're doing. Um, a I, lot of people see financially. We we see the team side. Mm. And do you spend perhaps in your, in your current role, mm-hmm. probably more time on the people side? Very, yeah. very much so. Because when you're, when you're running so many properties like Jeff is doing, especially that high end, that sucks a lot of energy on mm. your day-to-day running. And what yeah. I find now, if I've got to run a property 100%, I can't do my job either. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a, you've, got to, you've got to give those people 100% effort. And if you're not <clears throat> doing that, then you're not the right person on that. But together we can, and the team that Jeff's built behind, well, with him yeah. as the team is extraordinary because it's a, it's a system that just works. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Like I see super productivity and, and, and super performance in some businesses and it's all about, you know, what I see, it's all about people knowing their strengths and being focused and being able to, to, you know, to, to, to sort of initiate and deliver and then learn and initiate and deliver and get better mm. and better. Um, do you feel as a result of how you've developed the structure of what you two do that your team is actually working more efficiently as a result? 
Yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot yeah, better yeah, as better. we continue to grow, and we never take our eye off that. What's what's happening? Yeah, mm. but I think from building teams and mm. under, understanding those those teams, we do spend a lot of time on on that. Yeah, all the, you know, it, that's yeah. A, that's a daily a daily grind. Yeah, interesting. Ensuring yeah. that yeah. is right. Yeah. But I think the other thing is, is that you know, particularly over the last few years, years we've learned that, you know, and it goes back to what Richard was talking about about the team, is that we we love the idea of people transitioning through the business, right? That that that, that come in early on, younger, you know, try their different areas, work out where they want to go, you know, and so they end up being long term players, you know, rather than just going out there and going for the dinosaurs. Like us, yes. You know, who who aren't prepared to change, that are set in their ways. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. our industry is probably very focused yeah. on how do we go and poach high producers. It is a bit like that, isn't it? It is, yeah. and and whereas we've taken a total different. How do we grow someone from a young talent into a high producer, and from property management or wherever, and we've taken people into. Mm. Our mortgage broking business out of property management. Yeah. We've taken people into our retail yeah. business. We've taken people into our projects business, yeah. and they're actually got all the way through to either be directors or shareholders yeah. within the whole group somewhere. So that's really neat, isn't it? There's a career path yeah. there, yeah. right? Like you build a business with enough diversity. Yes. But also, I guess you, it's good. You could have diversity, but you've also got to focus around. You want to bring those people through. Right, yeah, and that, and, that, and that takes a lot of effort and energy because they're not all yeah. great starters and they're not all go all the way through and, and drink the Kool-Aid to say, yeah, we want to be part of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We have the passion for the growth and the, and the career growth, yeah. but not all of them have the same direction and yeah. ideas and what they want to achieve. Is that tricky? Like, how do you? I've always found it difficult, especially when I was a young guy in business. But I guess I've, I've figured out a few things down the track. But it's finding out those underlying motivations of each of, of the individuals, yeah. because they are they seem to be yeah. all differently shaped. There's different drivers, and it's kind of trying to align them or not. I guess isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and not, like not everyone's the same. No. And, and that's the thing that I think we've learned, yeah, and we're still continuing to learn, but, yeah, you know, it's very different to, and when we talk to our guys about idea what we did 20 years ago, right, things are very different, and in fairness, a lot of them say, yeah, but it's not 20 years ago. No. You know, it's today. So yeah, yeah. so they have different values. They have different, yeah, I'm not saying they have different work ethic because they all have very good work ethic, but, you know, everyone's got different opinions on work-life balance, yeah. And these sorts of things, which yeah, it means that okay, then they need to be more productive, which is very different because back then we didn't have computers, we didn't have anything, so it's just it was really about the hours you put in. Yes. Whereas now, I think it's also about how smart you work. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, so would that be the biggest difference in the industry? Do you think? Yeah, I'm well, still on paper. Yes, I know. <laughs> <should be laughs> I'm waiting for you to take some notes. But he's saying that he bangs on every week about a paperless office, right? Yeah. So that's just, that's just well, make note of that. That, that. That's the only following he's got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, what, 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 what. <laughs> we and, and, and yeah. that it's an interesting yeah. thing because every year we actually design something and have a have <laughs> have a goal of what we're going to achieve. So last year was mm. to get to a paperless office. Yeah. And in our property management area. I said, this is just going to be, because they were like, everything was there. And by the end of the year, we got to 98% paperless office in property management. So, really? yeah, it's wow. it's the older dinosaurs yeah. in the business that I've got to go, Jeff, we've got to do this. And, hey, and, and the two of us look at each other. Now you should walk up. If you want a video of my office, you can. Right, Jeff. I got asked yesterday, I've got to put a filing cabinet back uh, in his yeah. office because he needs a filing uh, cabinet. Uh, so did I mean, you know about that? No. <laughs> yeah, you do. Okay, you saw that out. <laughs> now, um, I mean, that's interesting because records in your industry are a big issue, right? Like they're a big thing. Like there's yeah, a lot of a lot of regulation around your industry. There, yeah. is, there's a lot of regulation and compliance. But in saying that, today, 
technologies move forward on that. Yeah. And I think we this year this year we we've gone down the track of disruption. How do we disrupt ourselves? Yeah. So when we talk about things, part of the conversation mm. needs to be around how do we disrupt. So whenever settled, we've always from day one been how do we keep going forward? So so is the patent office thing a, 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 an example of disruption? Um, that was that was a theme that we ran last year yeah. um, to get to a point of if we've got everything in the cloud and on the systems of where we need to be, how do we now start to disrupt our thinking on all of our processes? How do we do things better? It's interesting you mentioned that. You mentioned Coffs Harbour, your hometown, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. shout out to James Calloway, who we recently did a podcast with. He's the MD of Halls um, Group, which is the blueberry processing yeah. distribution yeah. business at Coffs Harbour. And we were up there last month and he said, James, one of the things we've been working on here is positive disruption in the mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. And and he, he gave some example of a, a tray of berries and for his his farmer producers that are members of the co-op, they have been able to reduce the cost of processing a tray of berries by, by I think he, I think it was a, 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 over a dollar a kilo, right? And it's a huge, huge, mm. It's like it's like for every tri five trays, as a result of that that positive disruption on improving processes, um, one of those five trays is basically for free in yep. terms of the processing cost now. And um, but but yes, he was very much of the view you you need disruption in the business if you're going to get. Well, you've got to keep thinking continuous improvement, and, yeah. and and that continuous improvement and that desire to continuously improve is something that I mm. think we've over many years have always we call it growth but it is continuous improvement but but you've got to be wired a certain way for that haven't you like like I, I you know as business owners there's a tendency to get complacent and say well the bank account's all right you know I'm paying tax um, you know I'm keeping things together I'm, you know I'm doing what I do what, what what's the, what's I think what, the, what's I think what the, Jeff said I think that that's interesting because mm. yes but I think what Jeff said right at the start is when we first started the business let's call it 1998 and yes we were younger men back then and and we probably didn't know a lot mm. but when we first sat down it was like we're gonna have fun and I don't think we've ever changed yep. that side of it yeah we did we didn't go out and go we want to make money we just went, we're going to have fun. Mm. And I think today we're still having fun. Mm. And I think when it becomes not fun will be the day that we look at each other and go, maybe we've done enough. Mm. Yeah. Um, but, but, but James, I think that's his... Like, we, but we've learned, we've learned from some mistakes as well. Like we've made mistakes over the years yeah. uh, where we thought, oh, that'll be fine. We'll just do that. It'll look after itself. Yeah, it didn't happen. And it didn't. <laughs> so, but, but, it, but it didn't stop us. Yeah. Right, so we said, okay, well, that didn't work. We need to, we'd like, we do need to learn from that. Yeah. Uh, but it's, but it's the little things. That, unless you've got something to shoot for. Yeah. Then we've also seen a lot over the years with people who, when we started, were a lot older than us. As soon as they decided it was time, instead of having, you know, how they were going to keep progressing, mm. their businesses very quickly got to that level, and then they lost focus, they lost energy, they lost everything else. And they started to think, oh, I'm comfortable. Yes, yeah. All those businesses only went one way. They went down. And that was backwards. Yeah. And that affects a whole whole lot of people, as we said earlier. So, you know, so we don't try and put 10 goals in place, but we try and put things that we think are going to be good. And even getting back to paperless, I was one of the worst, you know, because I think, <laughs> all right, I'll have my pile of paper there. We're recording this. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but if you walk through it's our office last Christmas year, party. it was like a tip. Like everyone's desk was this high. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now, so getting rid of papers makes people, you know, helps us all be a bit more productive, more organised. So it helps everyone in the long run, not only to be okay, it's better for the environment and everything else, it's actually better for us all. Yeah, I yeah. think that's really yeah. interesting. Like, um, as you know, we value businesses and what we look at, one of the things we look at is sustainability of earnings, mm. which is a forward thing. And it's very financial, right? You would think, but but I think you've hit on both of you. What there's there's a bunch of non-financial attributes that contribute to that. Mm. 
I, I wouldn't underestimate the fun piece, right? Because yeah. that's a whole mindset. And it's easy to, easy to say, and, and uh, you know, I don't want our audience to, to think about it as too sim simplistic because it's, it, it drives a certain behaviour, doesn't mm. it, around how you it, look at it. it, you know? it, it and in the early days, it probably drove a certain culture mm. that was, as we grew up, <laughs> we look back and we go, yeah, we... Were we like that? Were, yeah, but, but, again, <laughs> but again, it allowed us now to grow better cultures and, and do things better into the future where we focus on our teams, we focus on the culture, and it's not, let's just go out and get a glass of beer. It's, there's, yeah. there's, there's more accountability in what we talk about now. And our, our, I must say the younger teams coming through are a lot more responsible. Um, is, it, is, that, is that difference in part, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm not summarising it very well, but it's a move from a short-term kind of perspective to a, perhaps a longer-term perspective? Around. Yeah, I think I think it's also maturity yeah. from, from our point of view. <laughs> yeah. we, we actually yeah. had to grow up at some stage, which was a couple of years back. Yeah, well, which has made it many. harder, right? Because you know, because we've got a lot of younger people who work for us. They do things, and we go, "Did you seriously do that?" And then we get reminded, yeah, well, what of, did you do? Of twenty-five <laughs> years ago, we go, okay, okay, fair, okay, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to talk about salespeople. You just said a couple of sales guys. That's what yeah. you said, right? Yeah. Which seems to downplay it a bit, and I don't know why, because I find it as one of the you know, most intriguing professions I've come across, sales. I think it's fascinating, like the whole dynamics of it and how it works. Um, like I, I spend, spend our lives looking at it from a valuation perspective, mm. right? Because there's sales and there's sales, you know? There's sales that deliver no profit, there's sales that deliver negative profit and there's sales that deliver a crap load of profit. Mm -hmm. um, um, and then, you know, you look at it from a customer perspective and there's sales that it felt like a transaction, and there's sales that it felt like they were having a go at me and then there's sales that, gee, they're a trusted advisor, yeah. you know? So, you know, help me unpack the sales bit, guys. Like, what do you need to be good at to be good salespeople? Oh, look, I think the number one thing about our industry, James, you mentioned earlier about it being, it's a, it's a bit simplistic the way that we look at it. Yeah. That's the beauty of our industry. It is pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as Richard said earlier, we didn't go to university. No. Right. In fact, I'm not even sure whether Richard passed, passed the HSC. No, but anyway, yeah. You know, we argue over this all the time, right? Cut. Cut. It's okay. Well, Rich. Hey, you're leaving him. It's okay. Oh, look, he's proud of it. <laughs> but but it is a simple, and that's the beauty of it. No, it's because right. I didn't. That, uh, that was my issue. But you just got to, like, you know, but part of it is being, you know, so it's simple, you know. I mean, you you, you work hard. Yeah. You believe in the, you believe in what you're doing. You know, you, 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 you know, and all that leads to you build a reputation. Yeah. yeah. If you build the right reputation, that helps you go like that. If you build the wrong reputation, it goes like that. And that's about as simple as it. That that's what it is, and I think, and so. I think to last in a market, exactly what you're saying, like Mossman, yes, it's a pretty tough judge on your reputation. Rather discerning market, you would have yeah. to say. And right? if you go out there and you want to tell stories to people and you want to do mm. different things, you get judged pretty harshly out there. And I think to to still be doing what we're doing, I, I think it's a privilege, but it is also. We're probably proud of the fact that hmm. we've kept just ticking away, doing what we're doing. We don't have to say we're the biggest or best or anything no. else. We're just about how do we stay doing what we're doing. And I think hmm. one of our big things over the years is we don't want to be salespeople. We want to be advisors. We want to help people through that transaction. Hmm. And generally when we're meeting people, we're meeting them at a tough time of their life in a lot of cases. Really? And that might be... Hmm. Births, deaths, marriages, the bank, yeah. all of those yeah, yeah, different okay. things yeah. can happen and we've hmm. got to negotiate our way or their way through those obstacles. Whereas it's only about the money and yeah. what are we going to get paid, that's 
pretty quickly unwound. Yeah, interesting. So the, being a sales guy is being able to be empathetic with the deal, the transaction that's there, and how do you make sure that you are got your eye on the prize for those people. So, 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 in terms of the R word being reputation, mm. um, um, should a young salesperson in building their reputation focus on the product or their client? I, I, I would answer that by they need to focus on the process and the process of mm. what we've developed of what we've done if you do the job right, and as Jeff said, it's a reasonably simple, not complex thing yeah. that a lot of real estate agents make very complex. If you do the little things right and you get the process right, then the result tends to right. happen. Yeah. 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 Whereas I, I sort of feel after 30, 30 plus years of doing this, 35 years of doing this, yeah. Yeah. We both started very, very young and we learned a lot of mm. mistakes and we learned how not to do things, how not to run a business. You know, we've all been there and we got to a point at the end where it was like, we, we've got to do it properly. We've got to look after our people. We've got to make sure that those things are done correctly. Yeah. As young salespeople, yeah. um, did you look up to salespeople to learn the craft or did you learn it on the job or yeah, how, absolutely. how was it? Like, um, uh, I think we were lucky mm -hmm. in that in that way. I mean, you know, Richard was at Neutral Bay and worked with uh, Kingsley, uh, Kingsley, Kingsley Oaks, Oaks and, and, yeah, and Mike, Mike Gillen. Gillen. Yeah. Um, you know, I worked with LJ Hooker at Mossman, which was Ron Wilson, and they had a great team of senior people there. Yeah. Um, and as Richard said, we, we were both young when we started. Yeah. So um, so we sort of see what challenges it goes through. And if anything, it's tougher now. Like we thought it was tough then. It's tough now. It's a competitive industry. And, you know, you... In what sense? There's just more... There's more, more fees. Yeah. Like the dollar values have risen so yeah. much that there's more fees, there's more competition, there's more, you know, everyone's got a different angle. Everyone thinks that they've got the keys to success. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they tell a different story. So mm. it becomes a lot more complex out in the market. Um, and people ask us all the time, what's the market like? And you go, the one bedroom market, the 10 million market, the, mm. you know, so many different, so segments. Many different yeah. segments. And what we find is investors going into the market, they exited over COVID as the market went up and then interest rates go up 12 times and the rental mm. markets going through the roof there's so many different complex little issues and things that are playing out that it's always there's always something happening within the world yeah and and there was a agent around this area that wrote a story saying what's the world like well the world's pretty good if you live in mossman Mm. If you live somewhere <laughs> overseas in the Middle East right now, the world's not that good. It's pretty so crappy, yeah. Right. The market can be a little bit like that. And I really thought his yeah. article in that was really on, on the spot yeah. to, to how we deal with the market mm. and what we deal with every day. Mm. Mm. We're not, most people think that we stand at an open house and that's, that's our business. Yeah, it's not that. Uh, and it's, you know, the open house is a small part yeah. of yeah. the whole bigger picture of what you've got yeah. to do. Yeah. Like most of our clients get to the end of it and they don't realise what actually what is involved in the process. Yeah. So yeah. Um, because, you know, I think in the old days you just used to, you know, when there was no internet or anything else, you put up a signboard, hand out a brochure, stand at the front door, have a wander through, you know, and the property... Take an sold. offer and away we go. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. It's and that negotiation good. right now <laughs> is extremely complex in negotiating a sale to make sure that you've done the right thing by all parties. Mm. So how do you do that as a salesperson, right? Mm. How do you negotiate to do the right thing by all par parties? Because isn't there a winner and a loser? I, I think in yeah. one word, it's got to be transparent. Yeah. And most agents tend to hide or say something incorrect yes. to one party. Yes. Which brings that to an unstable negotiation. Yeah. Whereas mm. we now 
spend a lot of our time again with our young guys in the office and developing them through deal support. So as offers come in, as things are happening, how's it going to be worked? Like for so long, agents have gone, got three buyers, put your best offer in an envelope and best price wins and we don't care. Well, that's the worst thing you can possibly do for an owner. Yeah. The owner goes, unreal, we got the best price out of those three. Whereas we leave the negotiation open. Yeah. We let the people come in and as long as you are transparent in that, walk away at the end and your reputation shouldn't be tarnished. Mm-hmm. But I agree, like transparency is the key to it. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, like every, a, a, our industry as a whole, the reputation of that industry is not that good. Like, uh, yeah, I think the last time, I don't know, we were above car salespeople, below car salespeople, yeah. and that's who was, there's too many lies told. Right, there's too many things where, yeah. uh, and I think that, you know, you start telling lies, you start not being transparent, then people are smart enough these days to know it. You know, and we get it all the time where you know, people say to us, well, we put an offer in on that. They told us they had a higher offer. And then we said, okay, we'll let it go. And miraculously, that offer disappeared. Yeah. Right, so so I think that's the that's you know, absolutely what people... But I, but I also think in that, which is really hard as as yeah. agents. We're continuously dealing within the market, and there's little changes, and mm. and we're not saying we get everything right. No. Yeah, we no, don't no. sell every single property we list, mm. but we go out there within the process, and we hope that we get it right a lot more than we get it wrong. And in that last twenty five years, I mm. think. Our track record is we do. Well, the proof is in the pudding. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And and so therefore, in dealing with that, you're dealing with the public and everyone's different. One of the hardest things is we go into a lot of magnificent homes yeah. and you walk in and you love it. So automatically, emotionally, you're going to go, oh, I reckon we could get a better price. But that's not necessarily what the market thinks. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes you can get the price wrong. Mm. There's other times where you walk into a home and you go, I think it's worth this. And it is, but some other agent has told them. A it's lot worth more. this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so our industry, as Jeff said, is is a complex how you do that and what you do. Mm. Why are lies told, though, in the industry? Um, and it's not just real estate, right? Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's a whole bunch of different products sold. It, what's the reason for that? Is it is it because... The salesperson is is wanting for something uh, and lacking confidence around their ability to, you know, to to work the process. Do you think? Oh, I think there's a few things, James. I think it's yeah. Our industry is was it's getting better now, but it was very simple to get into. Mm. Yeah, I mean you could Fair basically enough. yeah, like you could basically pay, get your registration, and away you go, and and off you go without any training at all. Yeah. So you're going out there representing someone who's selling their most valuable asset yeah. and you're selling something that you've actually never sold anything before. Our industry is also very good and we see it all the time. Someone who has come into the industry, been in it for one month, yet they're putting it all over the media and letterbox dropping about, yeah, I'm the area specialist. You know, I've sold all these properties, which they haven't. Makes them sound good, they list it, but they actually don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, again, and, but again, uh, yeah. un, unraveling that without you know what what the industry is, we're a success based industry, so you get paid on success. Yeah, yeah. You in a valuation area, you get paid, and you go, that's what it's going to cost you. That's what the number is done. Yeah. A lawyer, accountant, our accountant. <laughs> hits a button and you know that you're on the I'm block. I'm sure your accountant loves you. <laughs> he does, he does. So, so, but our industry is, yes, we've got to get to a number and if we don't hit that number or we don't do the process right and it doesn't work, you don't get paid for all that time. So it's not a time-based industry, it's a success it's industry. Yeah. And therefore... When you get that with a whole lot of people, that can bring some people undone. Can be good behaviours and bad behaviours. Yeah. And I think Absolutely. in any yeah. industry and all the people that you talk to and yes. you see, yeah. there's good ones and there's bad ones. There are. And, yeah. and I don't think that's 
just real estate. But no, yeah. it's across a range. But real yeah, estate right. definitely has that reputation and we do see that. So. Yeah. Mm. What does it feel like to sell a, I don't know, $15 million house in Mossman? Oh, look, I think as Richard said earlier, we actually say that we're, we're, we're lucky to be able to do that. It is, it, it is a genuine privilege. I mean, to be able to go and look at these houses and work on them and deal with the people and sell them, you know, um, but I think, as we also said earlier, once you lose that passion for that or the love of doing that, then maybe it's time to start doing something Yeah, different. yeah, yeah. You know, so, um, mm. because, you know, we are, like, we're fortunate. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're in an area um, where, who would have thought in COVID, you know, I mean, look at all the pain that, that a lot of people went through. Yeah, exactly. Everyone goes, to, yeah, and... We thought the same thing. Yeah, uh, within a week of COVID happening, we're sort of bunkering down, saying, "Right, oh, yeah, you know, we need to look at everyone. We need to work out, you know, how, how are we going to survive? How do we yeah, do this? How yeah. we can survive? Or well, how uh, do we protect our people? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. How, how does all that work? And yet the market goes up. So fascinating. Yeah. So yeah. we have been very lucky as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the market's been good since about nineteen ninety six. Mm. So, so, so this lower North Shore area has is is a is a great area mm. yeah. from our point of view. That if you're going to do it anywhere in Australia, yeah, there was a good selection process. Yeah. Why why is it a great area? Is it because it's got a mix of sort of investment opportunities as well as owner occupiers, or is it is it is it the beauty of the harbour and the loca- location of Sydney, or is it a bunch of different things? It isn't the eastern suburbs, so that's a good start. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's the right side of the bridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You can look at that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, I think I think I think the harbour is the appeal, and um, I think it, it, this is what we see is a lot more family orientated area. We see our business as a real family business. Um, yeah. We started as a family yeah. business. Yes, it has grown, but. It has been one of our real strong values to stay family. Um, over that 25 years, seven years ago, we changed from where we started as a brand yeah. into another brand now as Ray White, yeah. which is 120 plus years of family ownership. It is. Right. And they've got mm. great family values within the White family themselves. Um, so that that to us was one of the big trigger points was it? to go. Yeah. That's something that we we've got to stay to faithful values, to yeah. to yeah. our to what we what yeah. our values are and, and and keep that aligned. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that mm. that and and again we we really try and resonate that through our business in in our teams. Um, we do a lot of charity work. We do a lot of different give back. Yeah. It's not just let's go and sell houses and let's do that. Most people think you're a real estate agent, so all you do is sell houses. Whereas our business is yeah. our business is different to that. We think yeah. um, in all the different sides where we can help people, and we can yes, we are clipping a ticket, but yes, it is something where we can actually hope hope we get through that transaction successfully. To help out along the journey. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, the family orientation. I want to pick up on that, Grant, because you've got clients, owners, that you, uh, families that you're selling, for instance, their property. Um, but equally, you're dealing with families and you know uh, people that are buying. Right? Mm. Um, if I'm to talk to one of those buyers and say, you know, how did you experience Jeff Smith, mm. for instance? What was he like? What would they say? Oh, perfect gentleman, great, great bloke, you know, all those things. <laughs> no, Just take that no. uh, hey, What would they say? Like, what, like uh, I, I, I think... He was a ruthless agent, you know, he definitely. screwed every last set yeah. out of me. Yeah, so, uh, like, what, what, what we would hope is that, and what I would hope and our whole, our whole team is that, you know, um, we never lose track of who we're acting for and we're very open about that, that we're acting for the owners who own yeah. the property. Yeah. Um, so, but I think the most important thing is is that, you know, people we would hope would always believe that it was transparent. Um, you know, we deliver on what we said that we were going to 
deliver from the beginning. Um, you know, we, we follow through on it. I think the other most important thing is, is that we follow through, I think a lot of agents where the issue is, is that they get the deal done, which is to exchange, I check just, out, because they see that as payday, yeah. and then they never see them again until a day before settlement. And that's when they're getting the. That's when they're getting paid. Yes. Yeah. One of the big things that we focus on is actually that's only halfway through the process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've now got to make sure that that yeah, and I think this leads to the longer term goals as well, is that you know you've got to keep working from there, because a lot of people don't understand what happens after that period. Yeah. And you can do that whole process right, and the handover at settlement is not right. That whole eight week or ten week or twelve week or some of them can be six months process. Was wasted can be wasted yeah. in that final one day. Mm. Um, and I think it gets back to what Richard was saying earlier, that's the difference if you're just trans transaction based and just on volume, it's yeah. just on turnover. We've never looked at it like that. Mm. You know, ours is always, yeah, obviously there's an element to that because we need to have our, you know, we've got a business, we need to be profitable, profitable when we do all those things. But we're also looking as yeah, the majority of our business, and this is what we love about it, is referral through people who we know. Well, and I guess and that's that buyer may well become a seller. Yeah, yeah. you know, in in a space. Yeah, but whether it's now, whether it's three or four years, but but a lot of the people still come back and say we feel as though that we did pay a lot of the time, but that's what you paid to do. Yeah. yeah. And so therefore, they yeah. come back to you and they say, well, we actually that. like, yeah, we like that. Yeah. You know? But without being ruthless or arrogant about it. Because that's very easy to do as well. Yes. So. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's an interesting concept. If I, if I just broaden out the discussion beyond just real estate, mm. you know, um, dare I say, in a, in a past life, um, you know, I had a few bit of a stint in banking, right? And, and really? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't admit it very yeah. often. But 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 a lot of my good salespeople selling loans actually had a very strong relationship with with their clients and and they felt like they were acting for the bank right but the clients felt like they were acting for them and there's a fine line mm. and but you know they were essentially viewed as an advisor mm -hmm. and and those salespeople were the ones that you know, were able to negotiate upfront fees even before the loan was signed and, and, and funded because, you know, they put themselves in the shoes of the client even though they made it very clear and transparent that they were the bank and there were rules around it. Mm. But I think it's a, it's a very interesting dynamic and it's not, not meant to cross the line, so to speak, because there's a, there's a risk of conflict. But I think, you know, a special salesperson is one where... You know, the person buying, you know, knows that they're talking to someone that wants the right outcome and a solution that is longer term. It's not just a transaction. Yeah. yeah. And, and every, like at some point, everyone needs a bit of a push. And we see it all the time where you genuinely look at it and, yeah, the family loves the home. Yeah. They do want to buy it. They lose just a little bit of focus right at the last minute to say, well, you're going to be there for the next 15, 20 years. Yes. So you should pay a bit more, which you generally should, because then you're going to own it. Yeah. And then you're going to live there and in... And that price over that period is really neither here nor there yeah. in the scheme of things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. But, uh, but I also think if they've fallen in love with their family home and growing my family through our home, it's been a great thing in your life to have that stability, just drive forward and do that. It's, it makes life a lot easier for that family as well. Yeah, I think and it's interesting just hear you talk about the sales process because it is simple, right? But mm. you guys are offering more than just a transaction. Yeah. I think I think right? from our point of view it's not it's not it's a transactional business, definitely. And and I mm. we, we never shy away no. from the word profit. We we are definitely there to say yes, mm. we've got to do that. And that's our responsibility. Um, and it is part of our values. We actually say that to our team as well, that the, the business needs to stay profitable, otherwise there's no business. Yeah. And you've been around yeah. long enough to understand that. But 
there has to be career growth. There has to be career progression for the team and for our, our people to stay with us. And I think we've got a lot of those people that have been within the business mm. along that journey for the 25 years with us. Yeah. There's a number of them. And there's also quite a few that are sitting 15 to 25 years as well. So really, there's, wow. yeah, yeah, there's a lot of those people within our business that we rely on every day to be part of that and, and things. So And in our industry, that's hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, because there's parts of it. You know, there's a lot of businesses where they have a very high staff turnover. A very high churn rate. And every time someone leaves, that creates a problem for everybody, not only the person who's leaving because they've got to start again, but, you know, well, someone's possible. got to fill that position. Yeah. Yeah. And recruitment fees and yeah. every, everything yeah. else is. Yeah. But how do you... How do you persist through that, right? There's a lot of business owners tell me, oh, I've got a staff problem. You know, this one well, left and this one, you know, well, well, back, I can't. You back know. when we first started, when we had about seven of us, we didn't have any, like everyone said to us, <laughs> No, Staff's the biggest problem. We, go, we don't have any. <laughs> That's clear. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> well, we just got to look after yeah, ourselves. All, 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 all got to go works. whinging about staff. <laughs> it's like, well, we don't have any problems. But obviously, as you grow bigger, yeah. That's going to happen, and and I think there's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's that. That's always a challenge, and luckily Richard's dealing with that part of it. But yeah, that's that, that, it, but that's that absolutely. You yeah, you know, the more people you get involved, yeah, you know, and and particularly everyone everyone works in our industry. They work really hard, and there is long hours, and there's after hours, and all and those six sorts days of thing, a week, and it's six days a week. You know, so a lot of people don't get all of that. Yeah. No, and no, everyone, that's right. everyone in our business doesn't matter whether it's us or you know people have been with us for six months. Everyone goes through these stages, so it's a matter of trying to work out. It doesn't matter what part of our business. It's trying to get that consistency, but also making sure that they don't hit the bottom of the trough and then decide this is all too hard when they've just got to keep doing what they're doing, ride through it, and then, yeah, things... Things, tend get, to, things tend to get better. Yeah. Yeah, but you've yeah. got to stay in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why is it that real estate businesses are only valued, oh, leading question here, on, <laughs> on rent rolls? Um, I valued a fair few of them over yeah. the years. And, I, you know, I, I think they don't seem to take much notice of the sales side. We've just spoken a lot yeah. about. Mm. I think I think sales. we've looked at it slightly different to that. Yeah. Yes, easy way to value it, and we all know what the dollar values are and and things on a rent roll. Um, I think I think a number of years ago, and I'd go back as far as five or six years ago, mm. we did sit down in this room and we had a discussion around how do we get the dirty. Mercedes out of the garage and we actually polish that yeah. up within our processes and our structures and we make it that we would love to see as the financial industry has done in selling based on profit, yeah. selling based on what we actually do. And I think we've, we've done that really, really well, but we've never sort of really sat down and gone, how do we sell our business? It's how do we bring our people through? Mm. How, like there's, there's a number of our case studies where we can go back and Anthony Cowie in Camaray yeah. that runs a really great business and is a co-director with us and an owner of that business um, with us, worked in our business for 10 years and we bought that business yeah. and yeah. we bought it in and James, you were part of the helping process on that. Yeah. And he now runs a really successful business. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we, we've built a, a group, we've built a network and it's not, our industry may value based on rent roll. Yeah. But from our point of view, we, we value our business based on what that profit looks like what the processes look like and what yeah. our people and the whole structure of the business, the pillars within the business are. So mm. we value that personally as we see it. I think that's interesting and, and you know, not just for a real estate business, but it, it, it goes to the heart of valuation of any business. Um, and valuation, as we know, is not just about selling, it's about 
what, as you said, what what you value as an owner in terms of running the business. Yeah. The things that you've talked about to me there, the way I process that as a valuer is, there's a bunch of, James, there's a bunch of sustainability factors here yeah. that are driving this beast. And forward. annuities that are driving yeah. in yeah. of consistent revenues. Exactly. You know, coming in. And it's not just, you know, Jeff Smith focused in terms of being a lead salesperson. Absolutely. You know, there there are other there's a whole bunch of other things around around that that make it a profitable business and one that's got, you know, sustainability going forward. So the market's got some maturity years to catch up to that, I yeah. think. But but um well, I think for a long yeah. time, real estate has been a mums and dads business where they've had their signboards in the front of their windows. They're, they're, they've built their business through to a point where, yes, they're now comfortable. Yeah. And it's now time to, someone else can do all of that and pay me. Whereas we've looked at it differently to actually structure it out differently with different leaders. We work a lot on leadership within the business. Um, we, we've got real focuses on how we continue to grow that forward. And between the two mm. of us, we pull that together. Yeah. And we may be wearing slightly different caps, but together we we support and we drive that journey on, on what we're trying to achieve. I think it's also over the past, James, a lot of people have looked at it and yeah, you know, as as risk. Yes. Because the rent roll, okay, you've got yeah, the yeah. income coming in, but from a sale, but from a sales business point of view, you know, if it's wholly and solely based on one person, that person leaves, but well, what is it worth? Yes, exactly. So but if you're surrounding your people, surrounding yourselves with good people, it spreads the risk because it spreads revenue. Yeah. Yeah. But you've also got other equity positions, and I think that's the other thing. You know, if you've got one equity position, you know, one owner, yes. then you know, how many people are aligned at any point in time, they can yeah. fly the coop and do those things. Yeah. Whereas if you look at it, you know, what we're working towards is, is that we do have... You know, it, Greed's an interesting thing, particularly in a lot of industries, but in our, you know, there's a lot of people who they want to keep it all for themselves. Yes. But that's why their businesses are only worth what they're worth. You think you've got to be magnanimous and share it around? Uh, yeah, because, yeah. you know, a, a certain size of a bigger pie, that's the way that we look at it. And we've seen plenty of examples in the past where, you know, you do the right thing, you bring, bring people into it, they bring more energy. Yes. You actually open the funnel up. Yeah, I like that. And if you open the funnel up, and that's why you know, every business that we've got, we've got people that have been with us longer term, they're equity um, holders, and so th therefore everyone's aligned. So therefore it does de-risk. And you know, obviously our, you know, I think our aim is, is that as, as part of growth, is that we do look at it differently from a value point of view because of those. But we've almost come full circle because you know, to take that approach, you've got to trust that those people coming in to the equity fold are yep. aligned to you. Yep. But I guess what you're saying is you've and, worked. And, and you've got to nurse them and you've got to mentor them and you've got to yeah. grow them. It never it never stops. It, it It's a continual, you know, nurturing process of every business. And the moment that you take your eye off something there, there's, there's, there's issues. So there's... So that's that's the hard part in trying to run a group as yeah, well. Yeah. It all sounds nice, but it's it's, it's never got its, it's got its challenges. Yeah. Right? Whereas yeah. one thing that I've learned is from a sales point of view, that process generally takes four weeks with a six week settlement, and you're done and you're transactional and you're doing it. Whereas <laughs> running the business, yeah. it it never sleeps. It's, yeah. it's forever rolling along and there's issue there and you've got to find something else there and there's growth and there's... But I, I do find, I think together we find that very exciting because it's, yeah. it's not yeah. something we went, we're going out there to yeah. do it. We're not, as we said, accountants or lawyers or entrepreneurs. We're just sales guys who like that challenge every day. Well, but yeah, but you set out to have some fun and you're learning along the way. Yeah. And, you know, you've described a lot of the attributes of what, 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 you know, 
what really drives and makes a business valuable. Mm. Now, whether it's a real estate business or, or another business, I, right? Mm. I, you know, I really yeah. think. Um, but most businesses are pretty the same, aren't they? Well, are they? I don't know. I, I think, think. I think. I think they've all I got think, one common denominator called people. I think, and, and if you start to get that right, you can then start to go forward. I think that's right. I think most businesses have got very similar elements. You're right. I think how they're different is how they run. Yeah, yeah. so that's you know? leadership. So okay. if your leadership's poor, you tend to... You tend to stuff up from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't you you? Tend, but, yeah. but I think good leadership it makes it more enjoyable, right? Because you've got... Now, if you're, a, if you're one person that's doing all that and you are solely responsible to make all the decisions and you haven't got people to bounce things off, that gets tough. Yeah, you carry whereas a lot. To be able to, whereas to be able, you know, if, but to be able to sit there and say, right, I've got an idea, what do you think? And whether that's with me or whether that's with other equity you know, people or senior people within the business or, yeah. or even younger team members, yeah. because quite often younger team members actually have better ideas because they're more tech savvy and all that's those sorts of things. Okay. Yeah, so so to be able to get people's opinions before you make it, you know, hopefully that leads to you making better decisions. Yeah. And hopefully less of them backfire on you as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I come up with a lot of ideas and he shoots me down a lot. Is That's he good. is that how it is? No. No, 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 no actually no. Jeff is probably the most supportive of anything. Really? And we've it, actually over the years we bounce things around, we talk about them, and I like going down different tracks and exploring and yeah. different things and, and, and things, but you've got to be a team to do that. Yeah. And it's, I, I don't know, I, I don't like sitting still, but no. I, I think between the two of us, we're always on the go. We're always thinking oh. and challenging and what are we going to do? So that's the fun part. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the the working and selling properties, that's fun. Yeah. It wasn't as fun for me after thirty years. I'd sort of yeah, started yeah. to grow out of that and I was I wasn't the right person for those owners every single time. Yeah. Because I had a lot of other things that I needed to do. Whereas yeah. taking that off Jeff's plate allows him mm. to actually to make it, it a lot more fun. To do it really well. To do yeah. it really well. well. And when you do it really well, you're making more sales, which is actually yeah. more fun. Yeah, yeah because if you're not doing well, things start going south, yeah, then yeah. it's not that enjoyable because it's not that easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, when you're dealing with people's most valuable assets, people it get is. emotional, yeah. all those things, which is absolutely and they, understandable. And in this area, they demand results. Yeah. They don't just ask for them. Yeah. They demand them. They're yeah. paying for it and they want results. Yeah, I like that. Hey, I've got a last question here because I, I, I really enjoyed our chat uh, <laughs> with these two simple salespeople uh, that, that, that know a lot more about running a business than most. Um, if you're talking to a young person just out of school, maybe mm -hmm. out of high school, um, they might be 19 or, I don't know, 16 or 21, and they're thinking about sales but they don't know what to do. Um, and they ask about getting into the real estate game. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them right now? We are brutally honest with them. Yeah, and what would you say? Because most people's perception is, and you don't know until you get into it, most people's perception is you get into it, you make a heap of money, you drive flash cars, and it's easy. And you'll be doing that within six months. Yeah. That's what a lot of people- Where do I sign? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's but, the sales pitch. Yeah, but yeah. But, but that's yeah. the pitch, and and you know, we have people all the time, and even when it, it's it's yeah, you know, you've got to work for a long period of time. You've got to work hard to actually get re to to start seeing the rewards for it. Yes. So we're very honest with people up front to say, guys, you need to have realistic expectations. But if you're prepared to, if you're smart about it, you're prepared to work hard. You're all those things that we talked about earlier, and everyone yes, says, "Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, you can trust me." Yeah, all these sorts of things. But if you're in for the long term game, where you're genuinely there to help people, it's not about the transaction, but you do need to give it time. Yeah. And if you're prepared to do all those things and give it time and learn for the learn through the process, then the beauty of it is, the harder you want to work, the better you'll do. The better you, the better you will do. Yeah. 
But if you're not prepared to work hard and you're not prepared to do these things, this is not the industry that you should be getting into. Yeah. Because that's that's the truth of it. Yeah. But again, yeah. on the nice side, yeah. because I think that is the reality. The, the brutal reality. No, the brutal well, reality. And I think and I yeah. think it's really important because Jeff will always call a spade a spade. So yeah. so which I I, I have a hundred percent respect for because we don't sugarcoat no. things, mm. but as an industry and what it's given to us has been well well past any expectations we ever started. Yeah. But I also think today, and we were 19, 20 when we both started. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, so we yeah. were we were youngsters and getting into an industry where they said, you'll never make it. So, but as a youngster, what you're asking, if you were 19, 20 today, there's a journey that you can go on and learning that property management and not knowing what you don't know at 19 or 20, mm which we never knew. We just had one focus. That was it. Sales, real estate, done. Yeah. Whereas today, looking back at mid-50s, you look back and you go, yeah, but there's all these other things. There's retail, commercial, there's yep. there's projects, there's sales. But you, if you start in property management and you got a career in leasing properties and understanding, and I've said this to my own kids, mm. who one of them does industrial leasing, mm -hmm. um, the, the, there's, there's, a, there's a journey that you've got to go on in an understanding and relationships and political games within offices mm. that you've got to deal with, especially in big corporates. Yeah, yeah. Whereas they can get on that and property is an industry that I don't think is going anywhere. I'm not saying real estate, but I'm saying property in the general. ownership of property every which way across cities, across residential areas mm. is here. It's and ingrained, you, yeah. It's ingrained somewhere in Australia that there's this title deed mm. that everyone owns yeah. or has a mortgage. And if you've got somewhere in that property industry, you should be okay. Whereas there's industries that come and, that come and go and technology is going to take over. Yeah. Maybe technology takes over the property industry mm. somewhere. We might not see that. But I'd still say... There's a great career in property somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we'd like to grow here is that, that career growth where yeah. you can get the Ray White DNA and you can hopefully come out the other end and we're yeah. proud old men. Yeah. With a yellow forehead. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think it's interesting. You know, property is ingrained and it's a fascinating industry from all mm. sorts of different angles. Yes. And um, um, although technology is and will play a significant role, and, you know, you mentioned the paperless office, it's just a, a small thing. The, yep. the, there's other things that will impact your industry yep. and other industries. But, but I can't help thinking you know, the family aspect of your culture and business and that personal interaction of the sales process. In a weird sort of a way, I see AI and technology actually almost enhancing those aspects as being more oh. valuable. Like I don't, you know, as a result of the commoditization of things, as a result of technology, people still, they still value the personal element. If we don't embrace those things, we we we're not going to continue to go yeah. forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, James. It's an old saying. I mean, yeah, you know, time is a real estate agent's worst nightmare. So because you know a lot of it is like you're not, you don't have an allocated thing that you're saying yes. we're, we're clocking on for now and we're clocking off there and those are the things we have to do. It's very easy to say, okay, well, I get to the end of the day. What have I actually? What have I done today? Yes, and um, sales guys have to manage free time. Yeah, free that's, time. That's it. And that and that is that is one of our oh. big big bugbears is how do you manage free time? Yeah. yeah okay. I hadn't I hadn't thought of it that way, right? Yeah. Right. But 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 I think the other thing that's that's also really important is, and it, even though yeah we were talking before, is that our expectations are, and it's never been. You know, every, everyone has a different idea and on what they're happy with. Right, so that's also the beauty is you don't have to be a record writer. 
Yeah, but as long as you as long as you fit into the culture and you want to come and work with us and be part of the whole thing, you might be comfortable writing a certain amount of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's fine. No, you don't necessarily have to win the race every time. No, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You have to be in the race and committed to do your best. Yeah, and and you? and as long as you're doing your best and you think that that's what you're happy with, as long as you fit into everything else that we're all striving for, then we also understand that. Yeah, not everyone is going to be a world record runner. Yeah, interesting. But but it takes it takes a like to have a really good culture and a good business. You've actually got to have people who fit into all, all those categories. Yeah, the worst thing you could have, I guess, is is number one winners well, across the group. Like, well, if you have ten gorillas, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, ten gorillas, then do, does that make it enjoyable coming to work? Yeah, what would that be like? Yeah. Would it be it's like coming pleasant. to the zoo every it's day? It's not pleasant. Oh? Yeah, it's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, Richard, thank you for having us. Thanks, thank James. you for talking to us. Thank I really you. enjoyed. No, nice to catch up. Yeah, nice I appreciate you. your insights, eh? Hey? And, you. and, you know, um, you guys must be proud of what you've achieved eh, over these 25 years. Yeah, absolutely. Still, still yeah. on the journey. Yeah. Yeah, still, yeah still no, well, but, but, you know... Uh, it's nice to kind of reflect a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyhow, well done. All Thank right. you. Thanks very Thanks, much. James. Cheers, Cheers mate. guys. Thanks, James. Cheers. So that was episode twenty of Let's Talk Business podcast, and uh, we had two sales guys talk to us: Richard Harding, and Jeff Smith, owners of uh, Ray White Low and Offshore, and a twenty-five-year-old business that is 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 more than just a real estate business. Um, it's got a lot of aspects of sustainability and a great discussion about all sorts of things, about values and also what makes good salespeople tick. I hope you enjoy.